Greetings. So urban planning content over the last several months has seen a rise in popularity across YouTube at a time when Americans are trying to reimagine what it means to live in a modern American city. Today I'm going to provide for you a few reasons why I believe more Americans dislike our current urban policy model and showcase some channels on the platform that you may like to check out that focus on North American urban planning and related topics. If you like the type of content I produce, I encourage you to subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment to let me know how you feel about this video. Let me start off with a political science concept that I think anyone can understand. Simply put, all politics is local. Your city council impacts your day-to-day -day life, on average, more than your state government. Trash not getting picked up? Well, that's an issue for the city. You want some more sidewalks on the street? Ask your city. Americans are getting politically involved and they see that one of the easiest ways to do so is by being in local politics. The influence on urban planning in the United States is tied to so many societal factors, such as race or the interests of large-scale real estate developers. For many Americans, they don't see the positive changes they want, whether in addressing a history of redlining or in generating affordable housing coming from within the system. We see what passes for urban planning in other countries like the Netherlands, Canada, or even Japan, the nice bike paths, the mid-rise missing middle housing, which you really only find these days in dying New England towns, the reliable and clean public transit, the list goes on. We then look at what our own cities try to pass off as development, or fail to pass because of constant red tape, and think, what can we do to have the things those nations have? We're not talking about massive societal changes here. Many of the proposals people want look at changing small things, such as adding bike lanes to an intersection. Many people also want to see a decrease in parking minimums or minimum lot sizes, increasing public transit access, making more sidewalks friendly to the disabled, making, you know, infill developments more readily accessible. These are not hard concepts. Millions of Americans prior to COVID-19 went to places like France, the UK, Italy, and raved about those cities' architecture and their planning, but somehow don't believe it can be done at home. Equitable development of our cities is one way to get politically involved, and millions of Americans have decided to put their weight behind it. Secondly, the average American today is environmentally conscious, and one of the best ways to do that seems to be by cutting out driving. Ideally, cutting it out entirely at all levels of society. But you know what the next best step is? Encouraging people to bike and designing the places that we live with sidewalks, bike paths, and new green spaces. Incentivizing modes of transport that don't use the car or deprioritize car transit from roadways. Light rail, for instance, is one way to do this. Or dedicated bus lanes with a reliable schedule and wide-reaching network to the surrounding community. Time and time again, though, developments in much of the country either remain heavily suburban and car-centric or are car-free islands. They don't employ the principles of multi-use development, often because legally they can't, and most car-free islands aren't connected to a wider car-free area. If you're living in a development that is supposed to be car-free, but need to take a ride-sharing car to go to the hardware store five miles away across a major road, was it really worth living there in the first place? Thirdly, there's being priced out and wanting a sustainable option. When you have a generation of people who grew up with this idea of the suburbs being a gold standard and suddenly they become priced out with very little alternative in their late 20s and early 30s, they search to find that alternative. Until then, they keep renting and renting and hope to save what they can for a down payment. Money is tight these days, there's no doubt about that. Medium-sized cities like Lancaster and Pennsylvania have narrow streets and were for the most part built in the time before the car. While not entirely car-free, there's ample space to bike and there are a lot of missing middle homes that you just don't see anymore. There aren't many Lancasters left in the U.S., with the majority of new developments being these suburban heavens, since that's supposedly the American dream. Even when rent has spiked across the country, there's an affordable housing crisis and when the intersection of places that have good jobs and can live without a car are shrinking. All this to say that rapidly changing cultural trends have led to a number of people wanting a more interconnected, less car-dependent city. Buses, 
bike lanes, light rail, at the very least sidewalks, are being favored over the car, not because it's anti-freedom, like Prager you might have you believe, but because they are a viable proven alternative to a standard American suburban development. Cities and the rest of the world haven't suddenly collapsed because less people use cars after all. The fact that areas with walkable neighborhoods are now a hot commodity need only prove that point further. These are neighborhoods that are highly desired by millions in America. All of the channels I'm going to recommend, and so many more that I'm sure you will be or have been recommended, are trying to show Americans what can be done to fix our cities, what has been done and what works in other nations, what some sparse few towns are attempting at home, albeit with a lot of pushback. Here are just a few of them. Ovi Urbanity is a channel out of Canada that has done a lot of work in highlighting the case for e-bikes, Montreal city development, and other urban transport content. They have almost 10,000 subscribers, and I really wish them well. Not Just Bikes, whose videos first inspired me to make this kind of content, has made a lot of videos surrounding their experience living in the Netherlands and contrasting it with their time in Canada. Finally, we have Alan Fisher, whose first video I actually saw was the roast of other urban planning channels. His content mostly consists of explaining why electric cars aren't as good as they're being advertised, and oh yeah, why American planning models need a lot of work. I'd like to thank these channels and many, many more for providing me with inspiration to make this kind of content. Please check them out in the comment down below. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for sticking with me.